Kelly Clark, who is a veteran loper and works for John Mitchell, Slate River Ranch. And Kelly has a few projects on the side as well, and we want to shine a bit of a light on our lopers. So, um, Kelly, tell us a little bit first how long you've been um, over here in the States loping. Well, I've roughly been in the States for about nine years. I started off at ESMS, our vet clinic. I worked there for about a year um, and then uh, decided, you know, change things up a little bit. And I actually ran into John and he was looking for somebody and I have been there ever since. So I'm going on eight years now working for John. And um, yeah, it's been great. So that's actually a long time in the world of loping because most, the, probably the majority of young kids who get in and get out, they you know switch around. They not sure what they want to do, and they have a you know have a go at loping. Mm-hmm. Why have you been committed to this for this long? Well, I think it came with. I was a little older as well, like when I started doing it. Um, a lot of people when they get into it, they you know they're teenagers, early twenties. Um, I'm sort of one of those people that once I get something on my mind and that's what I want to do, I want to learn it that way. Um, and that's you know I was like I didn't want to switch around and you know I have a great rapport with um, with John and Slate River and and it's one of those things where it's like well I, I don't want to learn it any any other way I want to do it that way and I also um, wanted to learn more about training horses as well not just the loping side of things so I wanted to stick with the one program and and that's and I've been sort of like that my whole life it's like well I'd, I'd rather than chop and change with something stick with it you know there's going to be tough times and you've got to get through it um, but when you come out the other end it's like oh wow I learned something and you know it just makes you better so so you are gold you realize that because every single trainer and probably in non-pro and every person who really needs help would love to have somebody like you Well, yeah, and you know, even my experience that I had at the vet clinic before I actually started uh, with John at Slate River, that in itself, especially for an Australian, um, like things are pretty, um, for lack of a better term, primitive when it comes to doctoring horses and stuff at home like that. And pretty much you'd spray some purple spray on a cut and be done with it. And I was like, wrap a a leg? What what do you mean wrap a leg? I don't know what to do there. So I, I didn't have a lot of knowledge when it came to those kinds of things. So being at ESMS taught me a lot and that that information there is just gold you know just that experience um and having the knowledge of when the vet would come over and look at our horses like i'd know what was going on and and so i just have that inside knowledge of that was in itself you know pretty valuable um and then you know also learning how to work with a trainer um you learn you know what to do and what not to do and then you end up being in a position where you get new people in where you can train them as well and it's less stress on the trainer them having to do all of that you know then that sort of falls on me now and i can train people the way john wants them trained so yeah it's it's i like being in a position i like to have the responsibility um but like i said i think that sort of comes with being a little bit older as well and yeah it's not how can we convince do you think more lopers to stay in it longer and think of it as a career you know what that is tricky um i think basically like they've got to realize times are going to get tough and it's like that with any job like i was always told you know animals and kids are the hardest thing to work with um you know like it's uh, they can be unpredictable and um it's definitely definitely that way in our industry things change um the going gets tough you just got to tough through it like the only thing like that's the only advice i can give is you just got to stick with it work work through it and get through the other end and you're going to have a great um foundation um like of and and know the program and yeah it's 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 hard to convince people of that you know it's sometimes it looks like there's not a light at the end of the tunnel but there often is well and one thing i think that's obviously increase the um, challenge or the responsibility for you is that you've taken on management responsibilities as yes. well. Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Well, um, you know, it sort of came about, I started with John at Slate River, then John decided he was going to go out and, and train out of his own place and train for the public. And that really opened up the door for me as far as opportunity. Like I um, had prior prior management skills in other jobs I've done. Like I worked for lawyers for seven years and um, I actually trained the new lawyers that came out of law school. Um, and then uh, went into shopping administ- shopping mall administration and managed the admin for that. So I had management skills. So it was something that I was like, I really, I craved, you know, having that management kind of role. And so we, when we went out to his place, it was like, well, it opened up this whole world of like, okay, well then there's, we have to build customers and we have to keep track of cow feed and we have to do all this. So it's like, I really took it on with open arms because it was something else for me to learn 
and it gave me more responsibility which you know in some cases some people don't want the responsibility but you know I took it as a, like okay this is how I make this better yes. you know what I mean and, it, and obviously pay more because I guess the one thing yes. that drives locals out of the industry is the low yes. pay yeah that's and it and maybe the long hours and all yeah those. the long hours and that's what I always tell people like never sit down and work out what you get paid hourly because you'll never keep doing it <laughs> Um, and, and that was for me too, like I wanted to make a career out of it. And so I, that's, I, that's why I took it on the way I took it on. I was like, yeah, I'll do the extra work. You know, I'd be in that office at 10 o'clock at night doing the bills at the end of the month, but it was just like, you know what, it's worth it because this is, I'm going to be more valuable. And, you know, it's like, it, it opens the door for a pay, a pay rise and that kind of thing. And it just, and also for me too, I knew what was going on around the place, you know, so if, if you, you know, hear conversation, something about this or that or the cow truck and when's it going to be, I'd know when it was going to, like I could answer that question for somebody and, you know, it's, some people don't want to have that, like I said, but for me, that was what that was a driving force. It was like I want to be part of it. I want to do the best I can, and yeah, yeah I want to I want to know everything inside out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you've obviously tackled that, and now you've got another outlet, a more mm-hmm. creative one. So yes. Tell us how this came about. Okay, so um, at first I just thought I was completely insane coming up with this idea, but I just had this this craving basically to like you know channel my creative energy somewhere and I actually it actually started out with I wanted to make uh, leather handbags and do them all by hand and my brother he actually um, he has got his own leather business back home in Australia and um, when I, I grew up rodeoing at home and I actually made all my own shirts like that I just I, I wanted I wanted my shirts to look like the the ones that were over here in America because we didn't really have a lot of that readily available to us in Australia and if you did go get them you pay a bunch of money for them so I was like, I'm going to start making my own shirts. And my mom, she was a seamstress um, and she was super creative as well. And so I got her to help me. And before I knew it, I was like designing my own shirts and making my own patterns.